Next, please welcome Honorable Senator Mr. Liu Chin Tong, Editorial Committee Member of this book, to deliver his speech. Tan Sri Muhammad Arif bin Muhammad Yusuf, uh, Deputy Speakers Nga Koming and then Rashid Hanun, uh, friends uh, Wiki Liu, Professor uh, Shafaruki, Professor uh, Farid Sufyan, uh, fellow MPs, and uh, everyone else here, uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. May I first thank Tan Sri Muhammad Arif bin Muhammad Yusuf, Speaker of Parliament, for giving me this honour uh, of being appointed to the editorial committee, as well as to be invited to speak at this very occasion, very special occasion. Um, for your knowledge, I'm a phantom of Dewan Rakyat. <laughs> I was selected in 2008 uh, as MP for Bukit Bandera, then uh, in 2013 as MP for Kluang. I was not elected to the one Rakyat in 2018, uh, so I I live in another house, uh, but come, come to the one Rakyat very often. I first got involved in championing parliamentary reforms when I was assisting Lim Ki Siang in organizing a forum on First World Parliament in May 2004, attended by Tato Sri Nasri Aziz, who was made the first ever minister responsible for parliament. At that time, Ki Siang had just returned to Parliament after a one-term break and there was a new Prime Minister who, champ who campaigned on the reform platform. Dr. Sri Nasri was able to promote some international causes via Parliament such as democratization in Myanmar, for which I'm grateful, but there were very little reform to the actual workings of Parliament. During the tenure of Tan Sri Pandika Amin Mulia, the only substantive change to the parliamentary institution was the establishment of the second chamber which is important, aim at creating more parliamentary time for MPs to speak. Regret regrettably, nothing much beyond that was done in his ten years, 10 years as Speaker. It is in such context that the two years of the 14th Parliament under the Speakership of Tan Sri Muhammad Arif was a great period for parliamentary reform that we will miss and will pray for its returns and continuation. What do we seek to achieve through parliamentary reform? I think the three broad subjects. I seek your indulgence, uh, indulgence uh, Tansri, I will speak a bit longer uh, since uh, you, you won't ring the bell. <laughs> Parliament is a living institution that should be at the centre of rapidly changing national life. Practices of Parliament should reflect the changing need of our societies. Malaysia adopted the Westminster Parliamentary Framework of Government at its independence in 1957 and the first parliament convened in 1959. It is interesting to note that a permanent set of ministerial select committees scrutinizing the functioning of ministries only came into Westminster in 1979 after Margaret Thatcher's victory. The second chamber, or what we call the Kamahas, was first invented in the Australian Parliament and then exported to the Westminster, and we pick it up from there. In the 14th Parliament, for the first time, there were serious efforts to mod modernize our parliamentary institutions. I recall my many conversations with Tan Sri Muhammad Arif. His eyes shine with excitement when sharing on the practices he learned from overseas visits or seminars conducted by experts like David Elder or preparing to adopt new ideas. My Deputy Minister's colleagues and I met Tan Sri Muhammad Arif several times and each time he listened attentively to our views and subsequently some practices were changed immediately with the help of Datu Rasmi and the Parliamentary Service. Why the Deputy Minister came to see Tan Sri so often? Because uh, we were the main people answering questions in Parliament. Uh, to, so we spent more time in Parliament than Ministers. And I felt partic particularly grateful to Tan Sri because I have lobbied for the same set of changes for years with the previous speaker, but to no avail. One such example was to restrict the time of each question and answer to six minutes, to allow for approximately 15 questions to be answered in each of the daily one and a half hour question time. The six minute rule allowed for more questions to be answered, and for ministers to know exactly which day of the week 
their ministries have to answer questions in parliament. You know, when politicians uh, took the mic, they will speak and speak and speak. So limiting both question and answer time is very important. One of the major pieces of work which is still ongoing is to present a parliamentary commission bill for parliament to have its own service rather than to be part of the general civil service. Civil service. Much as I and my colleague used to talk about reviving the Parliamentary Service Act 1963, which was abolished in 1992, Tan Sri Muhammad Arif is right with his idea that the Malaysian Parliament deserves a new act to govern its administration so that it actually is up to date and is part of this idea that we should keep up to date, keep our Parliament up to date. The second reason why we want, we want to push for parliamentary reform is about the idea of core governing. The Westminster Parliament's primary function is actually to form government and to have the confidence in the government to be tested on parliamentary form, parliamentary flaws. But parliament should not be put aside to become a rubber stamp after government is formed. This is what happened throughout the history of the Malaysian Parliament until 2018. It is very difficult to convince the executive to create more parliamentary committees for the MPs to participate in governing and for the public to co come forward to share their views during parliamentary inquiries. Tan Sri Pandika tried in 2016. There was an attempt to set up uh, parliamentary committees, but uh, the, all the proposals were rejected by the executive at that time. Government needs to see Governments of all stripes, uh, of all parties, need to see Parliament as partners in core governing to enable the flourishing of parliamentary committees as well as high-quality debates and questions in the chamber. Ministers won't know everything that happened under their watch. The time of government knows best is long gone. Transparency and accountability by ministers to Parliament and by civil servants to parliamentary committees would help ensure that the government is run with the people's best interest in mind. I think that part about civil servant responding or uh, uh, coming forward to, to explain their ministry to the parliamentary committees is something that we should push and we should do more. Core governing through parliamentary committees would also help nurture a bipartisan group of MPs who will be subject matters expert on policy areas they devote their time on. This would allow successive, successive government from both sides to draw talents to be promoted to the front bench. Their interaction with bureaucrats in the committee works would also help foster a strong whole of government ethos. Committee works would also strengthen collegial bipartisanship, which are important to the functioning of democracy. Uh, we, our bipartisanship, bipartisanship usually happen at the coffee house, at the lounge. Uh, we do have bipartisanship, bipartisanship, but it's in the lounge. Whereas I think uh, an actual democracy needs more than the lounge to be a, a place for bipartisanship. I'm very glad that the 14th Parliament has a very active public accounts committee chaired by an opposition MP and 10 select committees on a wide range of subjects such as Defence and Home Affairs Committee, of which I have interaction with, which can serve as the precursor for full-fledged ministerial select committee system. Public, health, uh, public accounts committee sessions were planned to be live telecast once rules are changed. More needs to be done to expand the mechanism for core governing. In the years to come, I don't foresee a single dominant party winning more than one third of the seats in parliament. Uh, as a political strategist uh, here, here speaking, I don't think any party will win more than 70 seats. A uh, single party will win more than 70 seats in the foreseeable future. And therefore, all future government will be formed by coalitions of parties with similar strengths, and there will be more changes of government, hopefully. In one, if one takes a long view, core governing is good for the nation and good for all sides of parliament. The third part, which I think is important, is to expand time and space for MPs. One important role of the MPs is to speak on behalf of the voters they rep represent, specifically, and the general interest they champion. It is important that Parliament makes space and time for MPs to carry out this important function to keep Parliament relevant to the life of ordinary people and to ensure that the powers that be at the highest places hear the voices of people through their elected representative. Let's, let us be frank, to a certain extent, 
each parliament or congress's chamber is a theater everywhere in the world whether congress of us or uk we cannot stop mps from theatrical performances for the longest of time unfortunately the malaysian parliament faces a double whammy we don't have enough time for mps to speak but once the mp had, has the opportunity he or she will load everything at one go especially during the debate of royal, royal address or the budget uh, talking about anything from from national issues to, to the longkang in their kawasan Tan Sri Muhammad Arif and the 14th Parliament are discussing the possibility of introducing opposition time while changes are on the way to expand the role of special chamber, Kamahas, second chamber, to allow for more forms of motions for debate so that some constituency specific matters can be dealt with there without having to waste the chamber's time, the main chamber's time. There were also discussions to allow committees to debate ministerial budget during the committee stage instead of the current practice of the common the committee of the house such move would give mps ample time to scrutinize ministerial budget instead of the current speed train that does not do justice to the billions of ringgits approved within a couple of hours for the nation six more should be done to expand the time and space for mps to bring the voice of the people to parliament I believe Tan Sri Muhammad Arif and the 14th Parliament have achieved great heights in enacting reforms which we have not seen since the Malaysian Parliament first convened in 1959. Law, principles and practice in the Dewan Rakyat of Malaysia is the testimony of his effort that sets the gold standard. It is also a statement of aspiration and an unfinished agenda for all Malaysians to pursue together. It will be on the shoulders of Tan Sri Muhammad Arif and the endeavors of between 2018 and 2020 that the future generations will stand on to achieve a world-class parliament. Amid the global democratic decline, decay and erosion in the past decades or so, the 14th parliament under the speakerships of Tan Sri Muhammad Arif was a great exception that we should all celebrate. And I hope this golden age is more than just a sudden appearance, but an ongoing process of democratization of our beloved nation. Thank you. Congratulations.